marriage as an institution has failed marriage exists as an institution of exploitation and business like deals this has been happening from the ancient times marriage in its present understanding is not togetherness indeed it is not togetherness the marriage has utterly failed to deliver what it meant to in the first place all marriages begin in the name of religion with great expectations this is hypocrisy without understanding the, the essence and nature of human being the psychology of sex the essential by energy the religions have imposed this institution on men and it has failed miserably probably the number of divorces will outnumber the number of marriages on any given day that is why no happiness comes out of it as a flowering and after 40 the trouble in the marriage begins in almost every relation some stay as a compulsion for various reasons others separate that is why no happiness comes out of it as a flowering it can not out of the roots of exploitation how can ecstasy emerge I have never heard of any perfect marriage. In the marriage all the old people they are the first on the stage to bless the young couple. If you really look into their lives and ask them what did you gain in your marriage they will not have any answer to say. All that you hear from people saying that my eldest son is an engineer the second one is in a very high position and each one of them have separate houses a big houses own many cars and things like these is the purpose of marriage this or to gather us the beauty so that the beauty and the fragrance of your being may spread also i have not heard of any marriage that has attained to ultimate flowering of love and the being if there happens a flowering in any marriage that will be rare on this basis no generalization can be made ironically They say perfect marriages are made in heaven. Nobody comes back from there, so maybe it is true. But what kind of marriage will those perfect marriages be? There will be no tension. There will be no individuality in the man or in the woman. They will never collide, and they will never fight. they will be too sweet to each other and too much sweetness brings bad things a fatal disease marriage is an institution that teaches men regularity frugality temperance forbearance and many other splendid virtues that he would not need had he stayed single it is not that traditional marriages alone have failed instead the self chosen marriages to have failed love marriage came to existence as a revolt against the traditionally arranged ones but is not going to survive and the degeneration has already begun in such marriage 
love come first and then one day suddenly love vanishes apparently no one knows the art of freeing love out of the quagmire of sex thinking about sex talking about sex or bringing a deep mystical understanding is still considered a tab and even those who have attempted are the ones totally engrossed in the slush and the quick sand of sex it was neither in your hands to bring it nor is it in your hands to keep it i remember as a child whenever i asked to be initiated or anyone who asked to be initiated was told that first get married why so much importance was given in sufi nakshbandi tradition to get married first and then get initiated then the master initiates the two the husband and wife together and in that he sows the seed of togetherness so that they can understand the complexity of this relation go beyond the quagmire of sex and attain to the flower the old marriage too failed because the insistence was that you should love your wife you should love your husband it was a should and you should not even conceive how you could love at the most you could pretend or act but love is not a pretension or act you cannot do anything you are absolutely powerless as far as love is concerned the old marriage feeling the new marriage is feeling because the new marriage is simply a reaction to the traditional ones new marriages did not emerge out of understanding instead only as a reaction and even this is what we call love marriage or self choosing or more appropriately the self choosing ones there is no one to blame for your choice remember when you make your choice consciously it is your own decision you made a decision and when problem comes in you begin to say was i stupid to make that decision or to love that man or woman it is not so existence is very wise the first attraction between male and female is always of the physical being and through this institution that is given to you to transcend beyond the physical first then beyond the mind and sometimes going beyond the body mind mechanism which is together which means the body the physical attraction and the emotional state is the way of transcendence and unless and until you transcend beyond the body and the mind mechanism that is the physical aspects the emotional the psychological and all that relates to it you cannot enter the inner precincts you cannot enter the realm of soul somewhere or the other in one way or the other nafs will continue to play its dominant role this is what we call love marriage and more appropriately the self choosing ones there is no one to blame for your choice 
the one of the most important or the crux of the matter is to look into your relation on a day to day basis. Who forced you to get married to this man or the woman in the first place? It was your own choice. It is when two people are meeting with one another, it is because they have some unfinished work to do together. That's why they are coming back together. If you have finished your last meal, you can go and wash your pot. But we never do anything in its totality. We are eating food but thinking of something else. This is how people eat food. When they go to the restaurant, the platter is in front of them, maybe a morsel in the mouth, next one is in the hands and eyes are fixed on what is on the platter and they continue to talk about the other restaurant that they, that they visited last time and how good the food was then and how we all enjoyed the food. But you forget the present moment, the food that is on the platter that is the only thing that can satiate you now. This is how we enter into everything, whether it is a male-female relation or something. That time it has to be thought that I made the decision to come to the restaurant. I decided to get married to this person. Maybe if the problems are coming, I have to learn to overcome and do not consider these problems as stumbling blocks. Consider these as milestones to climb over these to reach to the next stage. You do not know what is outside beyond or the other side of that stony rock that you have come across along the way. It is for the heart to suggest our problems and it is awareness to solve them. And a wise man is one who uses these problems on a day-to-day -day basis that seem to impede our way as milestones to reach to end the destination. And the day you attain totality into that, you will no more be interested in any male-female relation. You are satiated. It's not that when you drink water, the balance, the water balance within the body is maintained and you are finished with the water. But after some time, the same balance is disturbed again, you feel thirsty and you drink water again. The ultimate in male-female relation is not like that. Once you are finished, you have transcended, you have transcended beyond the male-female relation. You have discovered your own individuality and not only that, through this relation, by going deep into it med meditatively, you have also helped the other to go beyond that. Then you don't need to do anything else. Everything happens on its own. Again and again, go and introspect on that. Why I was brought into this relationship? To bring the problems no. To learn from these problems and transcend beyond this. If you can transcend, you have attained to totality. You see the stumbling blocks coming in, you change your way. You choose another one. Again, the same way the problem comes in. The nature of the problems never change when you change the life partners from one to another. And in some cases they go on worsening. 
again in your understanding and upbringing, you blame the other for the failure and problems this has to stop together. Marriage is a subtle politics of domination. Your fatherhood, motherhood is subtle politics. With marriage, love disappears completely. Marriage has made love disappear from the earth. The other consideration for marriage is arranged money, finance, family prestige and astrology. These are all absent. They have nothing to do with the heart of two persons who are going to be married. All traditional marriages are astrologically verified to be success. That too has failed. So marriage is almost always a failure. Only in rare accident it is not so. But they are accidents and expectations too. They cannot be counted. Marriage is always on the rocks because it is for wrong reasons. Only love can become the foundation of a real marriage. There is no other way. Because there is no other way to find out that your wavelength is exactly the same as the others that you vibrate in the same way as the other. Two musical instruments placed facing one another begins to vibrate in the same tune. There is no other way to find out. One should marry only when one is wise enough. Marry only when you have understood the psychology of sex and also the dimensions beyond it as well. Marriage is not for young people. For young people is to fool around Marriage is for those who have experienced life in many ways, who have seen all the colors, the whole spectrum of it, and are now ready to settle. I am not against marriage, but certainly I am in for love. If love becomes your marriage, it will be good, and transcendence will happen through marriage then. However, do not expect that marriage can bring love. That is not possible. Vice versa is true. Certainly love can become a marriage. You have to work very consciously to transform your love into marriage. Ordinarily people destroy their love. They do everything to destroy it and then they suffer. And they go on saying, what went wrong, I do not know. They destroy in the first place and then they do everything to continue to destroy it. There is tremendous desire and longing for love, but love needs great awareness. Only then can it reach the highest peak, the climax. It has nothing to do with love, and the climax in love is marriage. It is a merger of two hearts into totality. It is the functioning of two persons in synchronicity. Know this happening as marriage. But people try love, and because they are unconscious, Although their longing is good, this is how we enter into a love relation. We are unconscious, there is a great longing, but their love is full of jealousy, possessiveness, anger and all kind of nastiness. Soon love is destroyed. Hence for centuries they have depended on marriage. Better to start by marriage so that law can protect you from destroying it. The society, the government, the court, the policeman, the priest, 
they will all force you to live in the institution of marriage and you will be living just a slave. If marriage is an institution, you are certainly going to be a slave in it. Only slaves want to live in institutions. Marriage is a totally different phenomenon. It is the climax of love, then it is good. I am not against it. Certainly I am in for real marriage. I am against the false, the pseudo that exists in the name of marriage and love. But it is an arrangement. It gives you a certain security. Otherwise, it gives you no enrichment or any kind of nourishment. I have never said that love is destroyed by marriage. How can marriage destroy love? Indeed, love is destroyed in marriage. Certainly, it is destroyed by your and your understanding and conditioning, not by marriage. Love is destroyed by the partners. How can marriage destroy love? It is you who destroy it because you do not know what love is. You simply pretend to know. You simply hope that you know. You dream that you know. But you know nothing of love. Love has to be learned. It has to grow in you first. Love is the greatest art, the greatest alchemy within you. It is the merger of the nafs and the logic and all that happens in the lower emotions. In the East, marriages were missed because of arranged nature. And through the self-choosing, the West is missing. Both have missed. And if you love, sooner or later, the person will happen to you. You have discovered the reservoir of love within you. And once you have, what does flower do? It explores its potentiality. Without being bothered about anything else, it brings its beauty and its fragrance by blossoming onto the surface and then its beauty and its fragrance fills the garden. And if you love, if you have understood its nature, sooner or later person will happen to you because a loving heart Sooner or later comes to a loving heart, it always happens. You will find the right person, but if you are jealous, you will not find. If you are simply for sex, you will not find. And if, if you live only for security, you will not find. Be a little aware before you are trapped. Marriage is a trap for love. Soon you will be trapped by the woman and the woman will be trapped by you. It is a mutual trap. And then legally you are allowed to torture one another forever. Of course, financial security and alimony is guaranteed by the court of law in case things flow then there is no problem in going into it if you are a woman. For this reason, women go in for older yet rich companions so that financial future is secured. Sex can be fulfilled later as well first be financially secured. Love and love as deeply as possible. Let love be your meditation. And if love itself becomes the marriage, that is another thing. 
although altogether different if love itself becomes such intimacy that it is unbreakable that is another thing there is no legal sanction legal sanctions are needed only because you are afraid you know that your love is not going to last for long you need legal support from it you know perfectly well that you can escape from you know perfectly well that you can escape or the woman can escape hence you need the support of the law but it is ugly to need a policeman to keep you together that is what marriage is the future out of 100 marriages 99 marriages are just licensed prostitution they are not marriages in the sense of how a marriage should be a marriage is only a real marriage when it grows out of love legal illegal does not matter the real thing that matters is love if love exists between two persons it is blessed if love does not exist between two persons then all your laws put together cannot breach them then they exist separate then they exist apart then they exist in conflict always in war and they create all kinds of trouble for each other they are nasty to each other nagging to one another yet possessive of each other violent oppressive dominating and dictatorial you would have noticed one thing probably if you may not have after the age of 40 near about every man's best friend is a man and every woman's best friend is a woman who is having similar problem in his or her marriage relation because with the people of similar problems we find it convenient to relate but you cannot be friendly as you were in your youth with the other it in a better world with a better humanity things will be different and the better humanity you can create by understanding the reality how the inner mechanism works the male female energy works because your two sides of the brain the left and the right they are never in harmony if that begins to work in harmony with one another out of that merge emerges a faculty that is called sacred heart by jesus a faculty that develops which is called kal the heart not the biological part when the lower emotions and the awareness merge together kal this otherwise we remain in the quagmire of nafs as sufis call it lower emotions where and we never get out of peace love affairs have been feeling miserably and parents feel very happy people in coin look in the west love affairs have been feeling then why are you against marriage they ask me. love affairs are feeling because first the marriage was arranged by the astrologer then it was arranged by the parents and now it is being arranged by biology or the instinct is self choosing you suddenly feel that you like a woman 
but you never know how long this is going to last and you are not even aware why you like her. You like her because her nose is very good, her eyes are like duck, but soon, sooner or later this physical beauty will vanish. Maybe it is just her, her hair is time. Now you are, are you going to get married because of the hair is time? Love has captured you in the moments of your instincts of unconsciousness, but this is how it happens. It is your awareness that can transcend you beyond this unawareness. Was I wrong in the first place to choose this person? No, you were not wrong. Your inner needs has brought you in the company of this person. You have to understand this and as you begin to understand this automatically, you start transcending. You realize one day that your need for the man or the woman has finished. You can get married but tomorrow morning when you see her here disabled, you will be at a loss. Is this the same woman I fell in love because of her hairstyle? How long can you be interested in hairstyle? Soon you will get fed up. The same hairstyle again and again, whole day, 24 hours a day. People are falling in love because a certain man has a certain type of nose. People are falling in love with Fragments, not the totality. These are fragments. Your being. It is said the beauty lies in the body. Beyond that, the beauty lies in the eyes. Beauty lies in how you look at the things. How you interact into the outer world of objects and beings. How you, simple things, how you interact with the clothes that adorn you throughout the day give you a certain kind of a splendor, a protection, a domino, and an elegance. When you come home, how wildly you treat these. Because if you, your spouse is stronger than you and you try to raise your hand, he or she may hold your hand. So you take out your violence from your clothes. A man comes upset at home, returns home, he could not say anything when he got upset with the boss or the superior. It's a matter of financial securities involved. He reaches home on pet, petty matters. He quarrels with his wife. Same time it happens, a little girl comes and he says, Mommy, I want this. Mommy is now boiling within. She could not do anything to her spouse, so she takes on this onto the child. Now child is boiling within, mommy always does so, I simply ask her for something. She comes to her room and takes it on her favorite doll. This is how the process goes on, we are always taking out the responsibility, the anger on the other. We never do, we never have buffer strokes or somewhere. You have to think and try to see if this is how it happens. 
someone has mentioned to me once. His parents came to stay with him. The parents were Indians and his wife was of a different nationality. In India, when the children are returning from home or the husband is returning from home, the wife or the mother keeps everything ready. She has the vegetables, the meals ready, the flour is needed. As soon as you enter, she says, go and freshen up yourself. I am preparing fresh flat bread for you. Come and have the meals. In the West it is not so. So in this house, the husband and wife both were busy in the business. When they returned, the wife says, this woman is sitting down watching the television and she does not even bother that I am now returning from the work I am hungry. In her culture, the food is prepared in the morning and the same food you take it out from the pots, eat throughout the day or maybe sometimes the evening meals are prepared beforehand whether the food is hot or cold it does not matter. So one day he said that his little daughter came and because of this conflict the father he the person was in a dilemma he cannot leave his father, the parents and wife as well. So there was used to be pretty often quarrels. So one day it happened he spanked his young daughter. It was a little child. Because he could not take out the anger on the wife or the parents. One then he mentioned it to me. I told him, let this incident be a bridge to you. This is how you learn in traditions. This is what was your heritage that you were treated the same way and you are treating your children the same way. Let this be a beacon light. What has happened to you as a young child? You were given spanking for no reason of yours because of the parents quarreling with one another and the children has to get this spanking. Let this be your beacon light and make a promise to yourself that you will not do this again whatever be the circumstance and situation. Luckily or unluckily, he was connected with me, the madman, always looks into the things in a different way. Sufis, the spiritual persons are always considered as mad because their way of Insight is totally different than that of others. He followed that. He never repeated in his life again. Now that daughter is a grown-up person, I said one day, when you are teaching your children your way of living, the meditative way of living, explain the whole incident to her. This is your legacy that you have learned in the living life meditatively. You have learned. You have used that incident as a beacon light and opened a whole new avenue. Explain that 
to your daughter that this is what had happened to that so that she can understand that and maybe use that thing that episode to continue in her life in new ways and means this is what we can learn from every circumstance or situation i have been taught to live in this way but no there has to be a break somewhere between from the traditions a wise man never lives by traditions he lives by understanding he lives with awareness this is the way of buddha nobody is bothered about the totality of the person and it is a vast thing the nose does not count much after two days you will not look at the nose at all or the hair at all or the color or the shape of it at all or the proportion of the body all these things are very minor and short lived the real thing is the total functioning of the person and that can be experienced only when you live together meditatively and that is the way you can transcend beyond the quick sense and the cognizance of sex which is the beginning of marriage and love is the ultimate flower of 